Yo, how's it going, everybody? It's your boy, Baby Hamster here, or Hamster Gang, whichever one you want to call me. Hey, I thought I'd go over some stuff today, um, because I've had some people asking me how I do certain scripts, or how I even look through games to find exploits. So I thought I would kind of give you a prime example here. Um, this is a game I've never tried to exploit before. Um, I know that um, they have an anti-cheat on the local cl client side and on the server side. Um as well as um, some vulnerabilities on uh, certain things you can do. So, um, first thing I did was I loaded into the game. Um, I, uh, I then opened up Synapse, and I script dumped um, the entire game. Um, so having a decompiler is very, very, very helpful. Um, this is what the decompiled... Uh, game looks like we can kind of look through some of these files. So this would be the local player meaning the current user um, And we got some scripts in here like animate and etc. If we look kind of through these we can kind of see if there's anything of interest See if there's anything that kind of sticks out I'm kind of looking for any remotes that are being fired or anything like that because that could be a bad situation. Both these first two scripts look fine, but then when we go into shift lock, if we kind of give it a glance over, I instantly see a property change signal with a remote. If it changed and it changed to this, then it fires a remote um, for Ragdoll. And if I look down a little bit further, we got a humanoid. Humanoid walk speed changes, then it fires. If we look down a little bit further, we got our property changed. If it's above 26, then it again fires that remote. If the humanoid state changes, then it fires the remote. If something is added or changed, then it fires that remote. Right now, what I'm looking at, in my mind, is a, si a client-sided anti-cheat right here this is the prime example of an anti-cheat it doesn't look like it's too far into detail um some simple checks here and there um so we'll want to disable this um either by deleting this remote which i don't necessarily recommend because they could have another thing hidden somewhere else in the game um where as soon as you delete this remote it fires another remote then you're screwed um because then you instantly get banned uh, so I would recommend more of doing like a hook function on this remote or a meta table disabling of this remote. Okay, so here is a basic example of a meta table adjustment to stop a remote from firing. So if we look down here, if the method is a fire server and the remote name equals this, which we would change this to the admin com rhp um, and this is a fire server how you know if it's a fire server or a invoke server would be to look at the remotes if it is a remote function like this one it'd be an invoke server and if it's a a remote event it'll be a fire server you can add more of these in here so you can add another if statement so you can go else if method equals invoke server and if you just left it at this it would stop all the remote functions from firing which is why we define the name so this would stop a remote event and a remote function uh, depending on if you really needed it so um, let's say this kick R if we wanted it to stop firing we could um, then add that in here as well and that would stop those two remotes from firing so you could still call them the game can still call them and it thinks that it's calling it successfully um, but it just goes nowhere it just returns so it just stops it from actually reaching the server which is very nice, very helpful, super simple, um, and a great way to disable an anti-cheat on the client side. 
Um, something I see here is in the backpack, we got a rename uh, where it's named it into random symbols. These are somewhat easy to circumvent as well because nine times out of ten, you can usually just Roblox lock these um, folders and then the local script can't change the name anymore. And then you can then reference it and change it however you like. So that's one way to get around that kind of stuff. We're going to hop back into the game here and fire this and then see if we change a certain couple values if it actually starts to fire. Um, we can actually, instead of just doing a return, we can do like do a return print or a return warn um, and actually say, hey, this remote tried to call, but we blocked it. No, no need to worry. And we'll try changing our walk speed real quick to something above 26 because that was the value I saw. So this is actually not going to hit the server like you would think. So we can actually still use our walk speed cheats without any uh, any real issues. So that means that our script is working. Um, we can double check it by warning. And as you can see here, anytime it tries to fire, it's just going to return that value. You can actually make this even more specific um, than just blocking the entire remote. Let's say that it needs these other objects like the MC and the PMG or the P, yeah, PNG. So you can actually do that by taking the arguments here. And if, so you can do like if args in the number one spot because it would be the very first argument, so argument number one would be SSS. If it equals SSS, so if it's a fire server and argument number one equals SSS and it is the admin com RHP remote, then we return it attempted to fire. And that way you only stop it from firing when it's trying to call the anti-cheat. Um, but then again, it doesn't always call just the SSS as we saw in the script. It's PS, SSS, S, HP. You could add each one of these into here, um, but I thought it would just be easier to do it this way um, for the time being. Now that isn't to say that they couldn't patch this um, by then looping it, having it send something every second. If it doesn't receive that, um, then it kicks you. Um, but obviously it wouldn't be receiving these every second, so. But, anyways, that's just a short kind of tutorial on how to find an anti-cheat in Roblox. Um, and then how to also disable it. You can do this exact same method for finding exploits. It's the same thing. Kind of look into the script. Say, hey, oh, this function calls this remote and this is how it calls it. So if I call it the same way, but maybe put a twist on it by modifying this value or modifying this object, then see where it goes. It's it's all about testing. It's a lot of testing. Um, when I was working on the conventional script, I probably tested every single function inside of their local script um, for their movement handler. Um, and that way I found, hey, if I disable this function, then it doesn't have me knock back anymore. Oh, boom, I just created anti-knockback. Um, if I disable this function, then boom, I don't have any more time freeze. So I can, boom, instant time freeze or anti-time freeze. Super simple stuff. Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. You could actually, considering the script doesn't look like anything other than anti-cheat, you could probably just disable the script as well. That would stop it from firing these remotes as well. So that's another thing you could do. You could do both. You could stop the remote from firing, and you could disable the local script for extra security. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.